Hey, what is happening to you in the face? You got a face. It's a good one. I got a weird face. I don't know what's going on with my face. Hey, listen. Uh, it is. Hey, I sound like my old buddy Joe Donatello, my old buddy who passed away. Hey, listen. Classic. My friend Joe Donatello. Classic. Uh... I was, I've told a bunch of Joe Donatello stories. Real quickly, here's one of my favorites. Joe, uh, uh, outstanding uh, human being, was a guy who uh, would say whatever he wanted, had all kinds of great stories about celebrity encounters. Uh, my favorite of which was he was at uh, China Club one night. He was a DJ. He wasn't DJing that night. He was just there at the bar having a drink. China Club, some drunk-ass guy bumps into him, knocks over his drink, and Joe turns around. Like, hey, what the hell's going on with this fucking bullshit? That's the way Joe talked. Hey, listen, I'm Joe. Get out of the way. I got something to say. Like, he owned the room every time he came in. Anyway, somebody drunk ass bumps into him, spills his drink. He turns around, and that drunk ass turns out to be Oliver Stone. Yes, director Oliver Stone, you know? And he was in town. They were shooting natural born killers. And so Joe turns around, sees him, and goes, hey, listen, Oliver Stone, listen. You just uh, bumped, you, I think you should buy me a drink. And Oliver Stone is drunk off his ass and goes, Fuck you, I'm not buying you a drink. Go fuck yourself. Joe's like, oh, all right. And the guy turns around, Oliver Stone turns around to walk away. And Joe goes, hey, listen, uh, heaven and earth was a real fucking treat. And <laughs> now Oliver Stone turns around to go after him. Joe's like, I'll kick your ass. You know, Joe's, I'll throw down. I'll kick Oliver Stone's ass right here at China Club. And uh, he turns around, and somebody grabs Oliver Stone and pulls him away. And it's Woody Harrelson, who was there with him, because they were filming uh, The Natural Born Killers. So he pulls him away and kind of looks at Joe and goes, hey, that was a good one, and pulls Oliver Stone's drunk ass away. But that's what Joe said to Oliver Stone. Oh, yeah, heaven and earth was a real fucking treat. <laughs> one of my favorites of all time. Just nails Oliver Stone, demolishes Oliver Stone to his face, basically telling him, that he's a dickhead and that heaven and earth is a piece of shit and you should buy me a drink. Didn't get the free drink, though. So, uh, we're not free. Drink that was owed to him. So, anyway. Uh, so, hey, listen. That's what I started out with. Um, uh, it's me. It's Nick DeGilio. Check me out on uh, YouTube, what you're doing, I think, right now. So, subscribe. It's free. Like, subscribe, like, subscribe. Send it to your mom and your uncle. Uh, check me out on Patreon. That's the important one. All these videos and other videos and new videos are available on Patreon. Donate. Give some dough. Helps me out. Helps me going. Helps me keep me, my, my stuff going and my videos and my podcasts and all that stuff. You like me? Help me out. Patreon.com slash Nick D Show. Give today. Patreon.com slash Nick D Show. You'll get bonus materials too. There are a bunch of videos that are only for people who donate, only for patrons, including behind the scenes stories of what really happened at GN, and there'll be a lot more. Donate today. My podcast is the Nick D Podcast every Tuesday and Friday. New, it's with the Radio Misfits Podcast Network. So, qu real, real quick video, uh, because like it, literally about 20 minutes ago, I um, felt older than I felt in a very long time. Now, I'm getting older. We all are. I was born in 1965. I will be 57 in July. So, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm an old dude. I'm past middle age. I'm getting up there. Uh, and there are times when uh, uh, my age hits me like a ton of bricks, or I feel really old. And that's what I'm throwing out, out here on the uh, Patreon page. Please donate. Uh, leave your comments there. Or YouTube-ish, you know, this YouTube-ish thing. Leave your comments below on this fucking thing and leave your comments. I want to know the first time you felt old. When was the first time you were like, uh-oh, man, I'm old. Now, it happens all the time. It's been happening to me for fucking 20 years now. Uh, I've, I've, there are moments when I've felt old. Um, uh, and sometimes more than others, and sometimes there are bigger slaps than others. Uh, every time I turn on an award show, I can't watch the MTV Awards anymore. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I don't know who anybody is, and I don't care. Uh, music makes me feel old. Modern music always makes me feel old. There are a few artists here and there that I kind of like, that I kind of get into. I don't know, am I... Uh, am I old because I like Halsey? I like her. Is that now not hip to like Halsey? Because I like her. I like Billie Eilish. I don't know. Is that is that okay? You know. But ninety percent of the shit that's out, I don't know. I don't care. I think it sucks. I think it's all a bunch of bunch of garbage. And yes, 
my music from my generation is fucking much better than the majority of the shit that's out there today. That's not an opinion. It's a fact. Take Zeppelin 2, listen to that, and then call me and tell me how good this new goddamn bullshit music is. And I know I sound like an old man trying to get some wedges, but I don't care. It's the truth. The music from my generation is far superior to the shit that's being made today. Again, I'm old. But anyway, like, watching the Grammys, I don't know what the fuck's going on, and I don't care. I watch it, I'm like, I don't know what this is. I don't care. And that has been going on for years. So I'm used to it. I'm used to the fact that I'm an old man now. I'm used to the fact that a lot of the art and a lot of the, you know, the, 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 some of the TV shows and most of the music is not meant for me. I'm not the, you know what I mean? I'm not in the wheelhouse of people trying to make money. You know, I'm a guy, I'm a, I'm a white, straight guy, you know, uh, pushing 57, you know, uh, who would rather listen to Black Sabbath than anything else, basically. So clearly I'm not the target audience for 90% of the shit that's out there. So I understand that. But I can still bitch and moan. You know why? Because I'm old and I've earned that right. But anyway, there are times when I, I go, Jesus, I'm old. Holy fuck, can you slam it into my face anymore? And I want to hear your first times feeling old. So leave it here on the YouTubes. This is something that I want to talk about on, uh, on my podcast. I want to get emails about it. I'm going to throw that out there. And I really would like to get interaction when I want to hear the stories of you, the first time you felt old. Like the first time you went, shit, and I am old. Okay? All right. So uh, the, there are many, many times, like I said, I mean, it happens daily. It's been happening daily for like 20 years now. Um, uh, uh, you know, award shows, turning on MTV, whatever, any of that shit. Sometimes going to movies. I don't know. I feel old and I don't know. Um, but there was, there, there have been distinct times where I felt old. The first, first time when I was really like, yeah, man, I'm real old. This was the, one of the first times. It's not the very first time, but one of the biggest times. One of the most slaps across the face times was I was directing this play years ago, um, probably 15 years ago, more than that maybe, um, 2005, 17 years ago, almost 17 years ago. I was directing a play, and it was a big cast. It was about a cast of 18 or 19, so it was a pretty big cast. We'd finished a rehearsal, and everybody sat down in the seats in the theater, and I went up on stage and I gave my notes. As a director, you watch the play, you watch, you know, the rehearsal, you write down notes, and then afterwards you give notes to your actors and your designers and stuff saying what you want, what should change, giving suggestions, you know, as the director. You're directing, so you give notes afterwards. So uh, we had done a rehearsal and finished it off, and all the, you know, the cast took a little break, got something to drink, sat down, uh, and listened to my ridiculous, you know, half an hour long notes from top to bottom. And I gave a note to a guy in the show. There was a guy in the show who was playing... This character who progressively got drunker as the play went on. So he starts drinking a little bit at the beginning of the play. And then by the end of the play, he's very drunk. He's been drinking the whole time and getting progressively more inebriated as the play goes on. Well, during a rehearsal, he was playing drunk, very, very drunk, at a scene that took place about halfway into the play. Meaning that if he was consistently, if he got drunker from that point on with 45 minutes left in the play... By the end of the play, he'd have been alcohol poisoning. He would have been so drunk he couldn't stand up, let alone say his lines or physically do anything on stage. The way he was playing the drunk very early on, he was getting too drunk too fast as an actor. So that was going to be my note. So I give him the note. This guy's around my age. He's maybe four, five, six years younger than me. So he's around my age. He gets my references. And the room is full of a bunch of actors, some of which who, were, who at that time were in their like 20s. So they were, they were young. So and at that time I was, I don't know, I don't know, forty ish, forty maybe a little bit over forty, maybe forty one, forty two, something like that. So I was forty ish, and some of the actors were in their twenties. Uh, so I'm, I give the guy the note, and I'm like, okay, hey Paul, and this, the actor's name was Paul. I said, Paul, listen, man, um, you know, um, you're acting a little bit too drunk too soon. Um, don't Foster Brooks it too much. That was my note. I said, don't Foster Brooks it too much, and he goes, oh, okay, and writes it down. And he gets it. So I start to move on to the next note, and then I notice that the majority of the people sitting in the, in, the, in, in the seats, the actors looking at me, who were in their 20s, all of the ones that were in their 20s looked at me and were like, like they had no idea what I just said and had no comprehension that Paul understood it when I gave him the note. And then I went, wait, wait a second, what are you looking at me like that for? And they're all just kind of like, huh? 
because I said, don't foster Brooks it too much. And so these actors in their 20s were looking at me, huh? And I, I, and then I realized, I was like, wait, uh, uh, wait a minute. You don't know who Foster Brooks is, do you? I said to the actors, and they're all like, no, what is that? And that was one of the first times. That was the biggest. I mean, there had been times when I had felt old here and there, just a little bit. But being in a, in a room where the majority of the people had no idea who Foster Brooks was, was the quintessential first time I ever felt really fucking old. Uh, so, you know, like, no idea. Like I said, you guys don't know who Foster Brooks is, do you? And they're all like, no, no idea. So, you know, my note was, you know, don't Foster Brooks it too much. Paul, who was four or five years younger than me, he got it. He knew who Foster Brooks was. There were other people in the in the room who were around my age who knew who Foster Brooks was. But the majority of the young people who I cast in the show, no fucking clue who Foster Brooks was. No clue. And that's when I felt, oh, that was the first time when I was like, Jesus, I'm old. The people, I just made a Foster Brooks reference and 75% of the people in this room did not fucking understand it at all. So I had to explain to them, Foster Brooks, he was this stand-up comedian. His bit was he was drunk all the time. He pretended to be really drunk. He would burp, he would burp a lot and stutter. And his whole bit, he made an, an entire career out of pretending to be massively hammered all the time. That was his whole shtick. Nothing else. He played drunk. And back in the 70s, you know, it was fucking hilarious. And I still think it's funny. And look, I'm a recovering alcoholic. I've gone to AA. And I still think Foster Brooks is funny. I don't give a shit. Okay? So, you know, now, of course, you know, everything is you got to be sensitive. You can't do that. Look, I'm an alcoholic. And I think, I, and I think Foster Brooks is funny. You want to make drunk jokes in front of me? It's totally fine. It's totally fine. If, so, if I find something offensive, okay, cool. That's cool. Maybe you've gone a little too far and I'll keep it to myself. Whatever. You can make all the drunk jokes you want and all that stuff. Um, so, I mean, I'm, you know, and there are times when I'm sensitive about it and I'm like, no, that's wrong. You probably shouldn't have done it that way or that's not accurate, especially when I see movies where they try, try and portray alcoholism or drinking in a certain way. I get like, nah, I get sensitive about it. I'm like, no, that's fucking wrong. Don't do that. But, uh, but fuck you, Foster Brooks is funny. I don't care. So, and, and then that's the truth of most comedy for me. I don't get offended very easily, you know, but when I do, it's got to be something pretty offensive. Foster Brooks to me is not offensive. Popular, the most popular in the 70s when everybody said anything, anytime, anywhere, and, you know, and I thought it was fucking funny. So I had to explain to everybody who Foster Brooks was, and they was like, oh, yeah, and then I guess maybe they YouTubed him or at, at something, or maybe after the rehearsal, I don't know. I don't know if YouTube was as big as it is now back then. I think it was. I don't know. Now, the point is that I made a Foster Brooks reference, and everybody in that room was like, you're old? What the fuck is Foster Brooks? Who is that? Why would a guy pretending to be drunk be even remotely funny? What's wrong with you, old-ass man? That was the message that I got. I'm an old-ass man who laughed at an old comedian who pretended to be drunk, and nobody in the room knew who he was. So that was, it. That was like massive, like, you, my friend, are fucking old. So... Explaining who Foster Brooks was was a big one for me. So again, what's for you? Now, today it just happened. It happened 20 minutes ago. I was looking around on the phone, and I'm fl- it was fun. Here, you want to add to the old oldness of it? I was taking a nap in the middle of the afternoon. Yes, I was. I was taking a nap. This is how fucking old I am. I was taking a nap. I didn't even realize this didn't even, I, I didn't plan on talking about this. Yes, I had just woken up from a nap. And I was checking my phone on the intranets to see what was happening. I had a couple of emails and texts that I was getting back to and all that shit. And I looked around. And on Facebook, Debbie Gibson posted a concert that she's doing for fucking AARP. Debbie Gibson. Electric Youth. Debbie Gibson. Okay? Teen Idol Her. Tiffany. 80s Teen Idols. Playing in shopping malls. Debbie fucking Gibson. Uh, is now doing concerts for AARP. And she cut a whole video. Hey, I'm doing a concert for AARP. It's great, blah, blah, blah. And she goes on about how great AARP is and that she's Debbie Gibson is now doing concerts for AARP. I saw that video and I was like, I should just be in a coffin. So that was the one. I couldn't fucking believe it. I was like, just, just, where's the Geritol? Let me have my prune juice. Carry me back to my bed, although I was taking an, an afternoon nap. Uh, so Debbie Gibson is now working for AARP. 
Now, if that doesn't make you feel old, like I said, I'm 56 years old, okay? When Debbie Gibson was huge, I was in my early 20s. When Debbie Gibson was at her, the height of her popularity, I was in my early 20s when she hit big. Uh, so I feel really old. So I want to hear your stories, okay? So people don't know who Foster Brooks is. AARP is now, you know, sponsoring Debbie Gibson concerts. That makes me feel real old. What about you? All right? Anyway, I've got to go. I have to go um, because uh, I, it's almost bedtime. It'll be 8 o'clock soon, and I'll be very tired, and I'll have to go to bed. So, But before I go to bed, I'm going to watch some Foster Brooks videos and listen to some Electric Youth. Yeah, I'm old. Tell me about the first time you felt old. Debbie Gibson, AARP. Kill me.